It's a privilege to be a woman, gifted with the ability to reproduce. She stands apart. Being able to carry a child and become a mother is a dream for most women. When dreams don't become realities, life gets stuck and it seems meaningless. Through my memoir, Just a Miracle, My Truth with Infertility, I share with the world the long eight plus years of infertility that we endured. I've tried to bridge the literary gap about the associated social stigma, societal pressures and emotional struggles of an infertile couple, especially the lady, which is hardly spoken about. And if at all it is spoken, it's all, always in hush voices. This book brings stress relief, comfort, hope, and even encourages the reader to cling on to life with a lot of faith and love, especially when you're at a crossroad and the end seems too far or never there at all. The methods and strategies discussed in this book not only are effective for handling infertility issues, but also to handle any situations that come up in life across the barriers of age, gender, and background. It is not a woman-centric book at all. It can and should be read by everyone. I'm sure this journey would resonate with many, make many feel that they're fortunate, and even highlight the importance of being empathetic and sensitive to people going through challenges. Rising like a phoenix each time I was hit by a roadblock forms an integral part of my narrative. The book ends with a lot of learnings and takeaways from this long journey. I'm sure anyone would be inspired to lead life with a lot of determination, faith and grit against all odds. Realize your potential, empower yourself and face the challenges. After all, it's just a mind game. Happy reading. The seasons come and go like thoughts of you like a wave returns to the sea into the blue may change but in a cycle that i can lose each painful but delightful to live through you came into my life just like another season not for long, just a time Just like another season Maybe this darkness Till you'll reappear For no reason But I'll cherish every day Until you come my way this season A very good evening to all the esteemed guests who have uh, joined Mrs. Nina George on the occasion of launch of her book, Just a Miracle, My Tryst with Infertility. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Nina George for inviting me to speak on this special occasion, which is being graced by one of the most inspirational sportswomen from uh, our country, Srimati Mary Kom, Padma Bhushan, Padma Bhushan, Padma Shri, Honorable Member of Parliament, who is a role model for the entire country, especially for all the women for whom she has set an example by being such a successful world champion and an Olympic champion, while at the same time embracing motherhood. So, uh, 
to speak about the book uh, that uh, Mrs. Nina has written. I had the opportunity to have a, uh, some idea about some of the chapters and uh, the subtopics uh, written in the book. So uh, the, Mrs. Nina has actually described right from the stage when the diagnosis of infertility she had to encounter uh, with her husband and uh, the whole journey uh, until achieving the parenthood and uh, the initial stage of denial, then the treatment, which usually is prolonged, uh, it's quite disruptive. Um, and then, of course, uh, those despairs and hopes in it's it's a roller coaster right for most of the couples uh, going through fertility treatment and at the end she's um, of course uh, uh, got the miracle and then she has summed up uh, her experience with some takeaway messages for all the couples who find themselves in similar situation uh, which is quite common in our society uh, be it in India or anywhere across the world. So uh, as a medical person, uh, I don't want to speak much about infertility. Uh, many of us are already aware of the various aspects, probably a couple of points that I thought I would share my thoughts on is about the role of the male spouse, uh, which is equally important uh, when it comes to infertility, because for every 100 couples that we see, it's actually 40 to 50 of them would have the male spouse having a medical problem. And this information needs to percolate down in our society because very often we see only the, the men coming to the fertility clinic and uh, the, the, the male, uh, the spouse doesn't turn up and uh, even though many times actually it's the problem with the male. So uh, uh, it is always advisable and we strongly encourage uh, seeing them as a couple uh, in our clinic and we evaluate them together and we encourage that both of them are together in all the aspects of treatment. Uh, if you're looking at the bigger issue of uh, the trend of uh, increase in male uh, fertility issues, it is likely uh, that it's going to get more worse because of the various environmental factors and the lifestyle that we are leading. It is not at all surprising. And um, I think it's, uh, if I may put it, the nature is striking back uh, on us because the way we have treated the mother nature. So, of course, coming to the larger issue about uh, the problems faced by couples in this part of the world, I would say one of the important aspect is financial. Uh, we have very good facilities, manpower, expertise and equipments, but most of them are in private sector and uh, insurance is almost uh, non-existent or minimal. Uh, with very few centers in the government sector. I know about uh, RNR Delhi Army as well as AFMC and AIMS probably, but very few centers otherwise. So uh, I would urge the public policymakers to look at this in a very um, uh, different way from what has been done till now and probably look at how we can uh, make uh, um, uh, affordable fertility treatment and probably increase the access uh, for the same. Um, overall, uh, I'm sure that the psychological aspects will be covered by um, the fellow doctors. Uh, but then I would definitely like to point out that many times the psychological burden in, on the individual and on the society is not quantified enough. And we really haven't looked at that aspect in this part of the world. And it is huge. And most of the times we end up doing a lot of counseling rather than actually talking about the medical solutions uh, when we speak to the couples. Uh, I think that's all that I can share at this point. I would again congratulate Ms. Nina on her book, which is an important step for creating awareness in our society and sensitizing our society because they play a very important role and they can definitely help in um, help the couples in coping up with this issue much better. 
I wish her book all the success. Thank you. Namaskar and greetings to you all. It is indeed my pleasure to be here for the launch of the book written by Mrs. Nina George, Just a Miracle, My Tryst with Infertility. It is also a proud moment to witness the book being launched by an eminent and highly accomplished athlete and the pride of the nation, Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, Padma Bhushan, and member of the Rajya Sabha, Mrs. Mary Kom. I would at the outset like to congratulate Mrs. Nina George for writing this book. One indeed needs a lot of courage to tell their story that has pain, struggle, and a lot of tears. Most of the couples dream of having a child and forming a family, and their inability to conceive can lead to a lot of stress physically, mentally, socially, and financially. I'm sure we all know at least one person who loves kids, and we kind of see the sadness in her eyes at the family functions and baby showers, but we don't really know the depth of her pain. Infertility is not an easy situation to deal with. One may feel the social pressure to have kids or may be subjected to judgments from well-meaning friends, family members, or even strangers. Infertility is traumatic and it can completely consume one's life. From one's thoughts to one's time, to one's emotions and relationships. There is not an area of one's life that infertility does not impact. Research has shown that women dealing with infertility have depression and anxiety levels similar to those with cancer, HIV, and heart diseases. Infertility treatment has made major advances in the recent few decades. And the success rates of various modes of treatment have improved and reached a significant level. However, adequate attention to the mental aspect of infertility and mental effects of infertility treatment is still lacking. We need to pay attention, not only to the medical management of infertility, but also need to take care of the emotional and psychological needs of the couple throughout the treatment and provide support thereafter. Fortunately, public conversations surrounding infertility and mental health have been increasing. Many fertility clinics have added counseling to their services in the hope of helping individuals and couples prepare for the mental effects of treatment. However, it is still not adequate and we definitely need to do more. So thank you, Mrs. Nina George. Being a doctor and an infertility specialist, I could not only relate to your book, but I also learned a lot from it. It has given me so many different perspectives and insight into what the infertile couples and especially the women go through. Your story will be a constant reminder to me and to all the doctors who treat infertile couples that we are every single day dealing with so many people who are carrying around a pain that is so great that they can barely contain it and that we need to look inside them and be compassionate and support them while we treat them. Thank you so much. The seasons come and go like thoughts of you Like a wave returns to the sea into the blue They change but in a cycle that I can't lose Each painful but delightful to live through Like another season Not for long, just a time Just like another season Maybe this time next year you'll reappear For no reason But I'll cherish every day Until you find my way this season
seasons turn and change just like your mind like the sun gives in to the moon into the night time continues marching it slowly crawls with each new one starting i recall The journey of parenthood can be surprising for couples, so they say. There's no telling how many miles you may have to run while chasing a dream. However, it's going to be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. Namaskar, a very good evening to all of you and a very, very warm welcome. My name is Dipali Narula. And it is absolutely my pleasure and privilege to extend a warm welcome to each one of you, to our chief guest for the evening, Padma Vibhushan awardee and member of the Rajya Sabha, Mrs. MC Merikom, who really needs no introduction whatsoever. She, of course, is the pride of our country, who has a glorious, defined career by consistent successes at the highest levels from an Olympic medal to world championship crowns and national honors. There's hardly anything that she, as the Indian boxing legend, hasn't won in her storied career. We also extend a very warm welcome to her husband, Mr. K. Onrul Kaum. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for our chief guest for the evening. I'm going to request also, I'm going to also now uh, be of course extending a very warm welcome to the lady of the evening, the author, Mrs. Nina George and her husband, Rear Admiral, a. George, who has very recently retired from the Navy after 34 years of distinguished service. And to each one of you present here physically and to all those who are going to be watching us online. So a warm welcome to each one of you for this lovely, wonderful evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to now request Arpit. Nina and George's very, very talented and dynamic son to come forward for a floral welcome of our chief guest and also commence the evening with a traditional ritual presented by Arpit. Just a miracle, my tryst with infertility, written by Nina George. Arpit. Please take over to do the traditional ceremony welcome. Thank you, Dipali Auntie. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. On this solemn occasion of the launch of my mother's book, Just a Miracle, My Tryst with Infertility, I would like to start the occasion by reading a few passages from the Holy Bible. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11 and 12. I alone know, know, know the plans I have for you. Plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster. Plans to bring, up, bring about the future you hope for. I repeat again, I alone know the plans I have for you. Plans to bring you prosperity 
and not disaster plans to bring about the future you hope for next passage is corinth the book of corinth the second book of corinthians the chapter 4 uh, verses 8 and 9 we are often troubled but not crushed sometimes in doubt but never in despair there are many enemies but we never are without a friend and though badly hurt at times we are never destroyed i repeat again we are often troubled but not crushed sometimes we are in doubt but we are never in despair there are many enemies but we are never without a friend and though badly hurt at times we are not never destroyed may god bless this function may the lord almighty bless this function thank you arpit for setting the mood for the evening and also for the blessings from the almighty for the success of this wonderful book written by nina george just a miracle my tryst with infertility a little about the offer the 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 author herself and uh, i begin by saying that uh, you know nina george as i have known her for some time now is the ever so charming well meaning and a huge contributor she did her masters in english literature and subsequently donned many hats for more than 3 decades from being a lecturer at a junior college to being a ground staff for an airline to becoming an entrepreneur teaching abacus vedic maths and life skills in delhi and kochi today she is an nlp trainer a life transformation coach and a speaker specializing in helping infertile couples this is really not all about her she has also worked committedly for differently able children was also the coordinator of sankalp a school for the differently able kids of naval personnel for many years with great compassion she devoted a lot of time being there with the school and the children she is also a designer having designed a paint you know designing painting sarees and dresses i see her wearing one of her initial sarees which i'm sure everybody will really really appreciate and uh, of course she's an avid painter and also curator of handicrafts i have been very very fortunate to have met nina in a coaching conclave a couple of years ago and i have certainly found a friend for life in the year 1990 with the matrimony and the wedding vows well taken between nina and george they led an exceptionally joyful loving and an adventurous life based on the beliefs of tranquility mutual respect and impeccable understanding of each other and their relationship aspirations with everything going in their favor life then gave them a hiccup a setback with the news of infertility this sense of childlessness was extremely disturbing ringing in traumatic times of yearnings and tremendous emotional and social upheavals however in the midst of it all they did not let the sense of hopelessness overpower them as a couple and they left no stone unturned to somehow find the silver lining to the dark cloud which they finally did experiencing the divine miracle by being blessed with their little bundle of joy named arpit whom you just heard 22 years ago through her book nina elaborates on those aspects of her life when she and her husband went through the trouble and the terrible roller coaster ride of infertility for 9 long years 
a face which was laced with enormous challenges, good, bad, and the ugly. She shares her significant experiences for the readers to discover how to deal with the tryst of infertility with extremely valuable takeaways. So with a huge round of applause, I'm going to now request Nina George, the author, to take over the podium and address all of you and share with us her innate desire to write this book. What was her reason? What was the big why for her to write this? Nina George, please welcome with a round of applause. Thank you so much, Dipali. A very good evening to all of you. It's an honor and privilege to be sharing this stage with one of the most accomplished women of India, a person who's been conferred with innumerable number of awards, including the Padma Vibhushan, and a lady who's really proved that being a mother does not put a full stop to achieving your goals and pursuing your dreams. The very thought of such an eminent personality, a personality of this stature, launching my book is indeed really, really overwhelming. Thank you, Mrs. Mary Com, for having accepted our invitation and gracious invitation. I couldn't have asked a better person for this. <laughs> a very warm welcome to each and every one of you present here today in this August gathering for having taken time out to be present here in this most important day of my life, I would say. And um, there are certain people that I have to thank for making me grow from what I was to what I am today. Definitely my parents, Matthew and Rebecca, who are back in Kerala, who really taught, taught me many things, taught me that giving up is no choice in life. And who made me grow up as a person of integrity, honesty, and a never say die attitude. Probably that attitude is the one which made me tight through my difficult times. And the most important person in this journey of mine, because I didn't stay more than 22 years with my parents, but I've stayed with one person for 31 and a half years. The person who made me realize my worth, realize my potential, and the person who always made me feel that there's no one around like you. He didn't make me feel that I was very, very special. He never looked into my inabilities. He always told me only about my capabilities. He actually told me that, um, uh, I don't know how much of that was true. He told me, you're very special, you're very talented, you're beautiful, you're this and that, and so many adjectives that he used for me. I think because I was young, I got carried away. And I believed it, but definitely it was for my advantage. He made me get into one beautiful bubble. And that bubble was so beautiful and cozy and comfortable for me. That is the bubble that made me travel through our difficult times. Of course, the bubble was very beautiful for people from outside. So what happens in a so bubble, so bubble that you see from outside? Rainbow colors. For outside, it was beautiful. But definitely we knew it is very difficult to be in the soap bubble. It was very flimsy. We knew emotional struggles going through infertility for eight and a half plus years. But definitely he made me sail through that. He's never complained about any hospital visit that I had to go. If you ask me, I, I remember all his, any leave that we went for on or for that was only for hospital visits. He really made me feel that I was worth it and really worth it in all the words that he meant. Gratitude till the last breath that I take. And thanking my uh, in-laws, both my in-laws are no more. They really supported me a lot. They never complained, they never crib, they never criticized. They, they, didn't, they really supported me. I don't know whether they supported me because George was supporting me, or I don't know whether George supported me, supported me because they were supporting me, but I enjoyed it. I, I was more a daughter to them than a daughter-in-law, thanking them always. And the person who gave me a new status in life, my dear son, Philip, whom we call Arpit, always thanking him for being there for me 
and giving me so many challenges so that I be, be my efficient self always. He's a person who gave me the status from a barren lady to a mother. When you're going through this infertility phase, you realize that, I mean, many times that you feel that you never cross that path. You think that you'll always be stuck there. And for that, and for him, I'm always thankful to God for giving me this child. He's grown up to be a wonderful young man and very talented, very creative. And whatever link that you've clicked today, the websites, all the standees here, it's all his design. He's done everything. I've just written this book. I think that was a smaller part in that. But the two men in my life has really made it possible today for me. Thank you so much. Now coming to the to why this book, the genesis of this book. When I was going through this infertility phase, I always thought that once I cross this phase, I will go out and help couples who don't have kids. I thought that I was not helped by people, but actually it's not true. Maybe they wanted to help and I created a barrier for them. Maybe they could never approach me, I don't know. Anyway, after a few years, once my son was born and I embraced motherhood, the intention of me helping couples took a back seat. I went along with my life. I'm not saying that I've not helped people. I've definitely helped couples. But then later on, I realized that when I was impacting a couple or a, an infertile couple or a lady, they was, their stress was never coming down because there were so many other people around them who were causing stress. They were stressors. Then I realized that if I have to impact couples, I have to first of all sensitize people around. All of us relate to stories, isn't it? We all relate to stories. So I thought the best way to relate to people is, or sensitize people is, tell stories. I know the best story that I know is my infertile journey. So I thought I'll tell it to the world. So through my, my memoir, Just a Miracle, My Trist with Infertility, I share with the world the artist's journey that me and George endured. This is just a stepping stone for me to reach out to couples. I really want to help them. I've done my part. But if I have to reach out to people, only you should help me. All of you should help me. Read the book. Propagate the book. Only then I, I could reach out to people. Otherwise, I'll be stuck with my book here and nobody will know that. I really want to sensitize people. I want to eradicate the stigma of infertility in the society, at least in India. It is a stigma even now. So what do I do if my reproductive organ bent haywire? Why should I be crucified for it? This is my question to the world. If an infertile couple or an infertile lady, what can they do if they, something went wrong with them? They've not contributed to that at all, isn't it? If you have a cold or a cough or a stomach pain, you would have had something to do with that. You would have had a cold ring, you would have gone and had some food from outside. But for the internal reproductive organ to go bad, nobody has done anything for it. So I really want all of you to help me in this journey of mine, to reach out to people, to help people. Now let me tell you, when I send these messages outside, many people told me, Nina, you're very courageous to write this book. You've got a lot of courage, you're bold. But believe me, I didn't need even an ounce of courage to write this. If I commit a theft or a murder and I'm telling the world I need courage, when my reproductive organ went bad and something happened, what courage do I need to tell people? Me and George realized that both of us are just characters in that story. What people would think if I write the story never appealed to me at all. What I thought is, who are the beneficiaries? The couple? The lady? Of course, never the man in Indian society. The man is never responsible for infertility at all in Indian society. It's only the lady who's called Banj in Hindi. In my mother tongue, it's called Machi. Only she's called, but not the man. I don't know why it's not called, why they're not crucified at all for this. Anyway, so I feel that um, all these things are there in the society. And uh, what do I have to do with this thing now? The courage. I talk about and uh, I was thinking when I went through infertility for those years of eight and a half plus years, that time I required courage, not now. Here I didn't require any courage. Those days I required courage. 
there are some people in this gathering who were with us. Come on, Amy Agarwal, Richard, he is George, was George's boss. He has seen me go through that state. Smiling through the difficulty required courage, real courage. I didn't want to show the world that, and I didn't want anybody anybody's sympathy. I didn't want to show the world that I cry and you sympathize with me. I didn't want that at all. That required courage. That required strength. And I've realized that strength comes when you go through adversities and you refuse to give up. That is when you realize that you're strong. We were strong together. We were courageous together. And again, many times I used to lose my focus and I used to be emotionally disturbed. And the captain of my ship, George, he was very focused and he knew how to steer me through. Now, what is in this book for you? This book is all about, many people would have heard me speaking about the emotional traumas that we underwent. I talk about the struggles that we underwent, the people that impacted us. And again, I have to tell you, nobody prepares you for the stage of life, infertility. It just dawns on you. And you don't have a choice. You can't say that, you know, because I'm infertile, I can't live or something. You need to go through that, the struggle. So this book tells as to how we, what was the reaction to us? Anger, anguish, anxieties, blaming, guilt. You wouldn't know the guilt of an infertile lady. There are times that I felt that, um, I mean, probably that was much more heavier than my whole body weight together that time. I was only 43 kilos that time. So I think it is much more heavier than that. So I describe about that and how we accepted the realities and how we went through that. And some myths of about infertility I've written, I've written about the takeaways and learnings that I've had from this journey. Definitely it will help the reader to understand, to learn patience, first of all, gratitude. What does this guy, life give you? Abundance. And you still keep cribbing. You understand that. You understand how to be in someone else's shoes. You understand life is not all about cribbing and complaining and comparing. There's much more to that life. And I've told about how to find the good and the bad and still continue with life. I'm sure many of you would relate to this journey of mine. This would make many people feel empathetic and sensitive to people in other people going through challenges. It would definitely strike a chord with people thinking that they're more fortunate than other people. A lot of people would de derive inspiration from this journey as to how to cling on to life when everything goes against you. These are the things that I bring into this. Again, I forgot to tell you, this book is extremely useful for the younger generation who thinks that Google Auntie will give them all replies. This book tells you things don't happen just like that. Things don't happen the way you plan for. Like when you get married, you always think that happily married and live happily ever after. There are things, times that it doesn't happen at all. It's great for them too. And now I come to the fact that who are my readers? My readers are, everybody out there is a reader for me. If you have crossed the age of 16, 18, if you can understand psychology that I've written in that. But to be specific, if an infertile man or a woman is reading that book, they always feel that they're not alone in this world. There are thousands of them like this. They'll definitely get a ray of hope. They'll understand how to live with faith in God and what that can do to you. And for the spouse of the infertile man or woman, if, if he or she is reading the book, they understand how each word, look, action, even thoughts of the partner can affect you, your reaction can affect the partner. Recently, I met a guy who told me that he's married for nine years and uh, his wife is always crying. And I don't like to go home because it's a bad state at home every time. So he's asking me, ma'am, could you help me? Could you help us? I told him, you read my book. That is the medicine for you there. You'll understand why your wife cried. You understand why she was cribbing and why she never replied to many of your queries. And again, this book is for the people out there, the parents, in-laws, mother-in-law, father-in-law, siblings, 
anybody out there, neighbors, friends. Basically, when you read this book, you understand why a particular lady was not happy going for a baby shower. Why she was sad when somebody's birth was announced. Some, somebody else had a kid. Don't ever think that she was jealous. It's her insecurity. You understand only if you read it. And this book is for everybody out there. I told you there's a reason for it. Like all of us sitting here, we all have some issues or the other to tackle on a daily basis. Cannot get along with in-laws, cannot get along with parents, cannot get along with kids. Financial issues, workplace issues, boss is bad, employer is bad, so many issues. But what are the solutions for all these things generally? Be patient, be a good listener, and let it be. Forgive, forget. That means the problems are innumerable. Solutions are quite similar. So for me, I know only my problem to tell the world, my infertile journey. So when you read the book, instead of the infertile journey, you put your issue into that and you get a solution for it. So that's what I keep telling, that this book can be read by people across barriers of age, gender, and background. It can and should be read by everybody. Recently, somebody told me, what if, uh, when I told about this book, they said, what if I find an infertile lady or a couple and I want to give this book to them, what will they feel about it? Now, I want to tell people, I have not written this book to be gifted to an infertile couple. You don't have to search an infertile couple. Okay, here, take, you, take this book as a gift. No, it's meant for each one of you to be sensitized. You understand their feeling. You don't have to gift it to anybody. So these are my readers. Now, I would like to tell you about two words I detested when I went through infertility. Barren and fertility. Now, what is barren? What is not fertile? And what is fertile? Which, what is fertile? Which can, it, can produce results? And I used to wonder why God made these two words only. You know, because any time a barren field, it used to hurt me. A fertile field, it used to hurt me even more. I mean, the problem wasn't with me, definitely not with the world. Again, life continued like that. And recently, we had gone on a trip to Srinagar, Leh and Ladakh. Now, saw the mountains of Srinagar, beautiful, amazing mountains. Lush, green, fertile mountains of Ladakh, Srinagar I saw, Kashmir I saw. Went from there, went to Ladakh, beautiful mountains, mesmerizing mountains of Ladakh I saw. Different hues, different shapes, different sizes. They were bare and they were barren. So the writer and me told him, wow, Nina, the old words are back again. Do you strike a chord? Something in the inner voice asked me, do you strike a chord there? Yes. The barren mountains of Ladakh were beautiful. They were mesmerizing actually much more than the fertile mountains of Kashmir according to me. They had more depth. They had more meaning. So what I do a parallel here is the infertile couples out there, they're beautiful. They're beautiful from within. They want to be appreciated. They want to be part of the system. But do we do it? How many of you can tell me an answer for that? Do we do it? Are they discriminated? They are. They never are taken as part of the system. They're always discriminated. They love to be appreciated. My son has really put out that uh, uh, the mountains of Kashmir and the bare and barren mountains of Ladakh. You see the difference? I'm sure you understand the beauty of the barren mountains too. So this is what I wanted to bring the comparison about. And before I end my speech, I would like to tell you all what I understood about infertility over these years. It's hard to hope for something which might not happen at all. I repeat, it's hard to hope for something which might not happen at all. It's even harder to give up on something which means the world to you. I repeat, it's even harder to give up on something which really means the world to you. 
happy reading and thank you. Thank you so much, Nina, for enlightening your audience so very candidly. And, uh, you know, infusing hope amongst people to be mentally strong, deal with the good and the bad days, believe in oneself, turn your pain to pleasure. And I truly hope, like all of us here, that your message is able to reach the audiences the readers across the globe. Now for the momentous occasion, for the launch of the book, may I please request our chief guest, Mrs. Mary Com, to launch the book along with Nina George, Mr. George, and Arpit. Arpit, may I request you to please come on the stage. Unveiling of the book. Just a Miracle, My Tryst with Infertility, authored by Nina George. A huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. May I please May I please request our chief guest to please address the audience. Thank you. Good evening to all of you. I'm very delighted to be here today for book Launch. Nina Jones, I am very happy that you are going to empower women through your book title, Just a Miracle. After going through your book and now listening to you, I fully understand the emotions and the pain which an infertile couple and especially the lady goes through. I appreciate your effort in writing this, writing this book, which will certainly give comfort to many couples going through this challenge and at the same time, sanitize, sensitize, uh, sensi sensitize the story as well. I wish you all the very best for your future. May God bless you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your encouraging words. Very inspiring. And every citizen of this country looks up to your grit and passion and everything that you stand for. Thank you very much indeed. We now have some very eminent speakers who have given their very valuable inputs regarding the book. I'm going to now first commence with our first speaker, Mrs. Payal Soni, wife of Admiral Satish Soni, retired. She has been the president of Navy Vibes Welfare Association, Southern and Northern Regions, a law graduate and a company secretary she has contributed immensely to various outreach and welfare programs, giving them the desired drive and direction. Mrs. Payal Soni. Good evening, everybody. I am delighted to be here to, for the book launch of uh, Anina, Just a Miracle, Tryst with Infertility. And I'm delighted to tell you about her, a little bit about her, that you all may not know 
and may not have seen she wears many a hat and i can i mean everybody has spoken about her accomplishments and uh, uh, her son the miracle is there for all to see in any case i will speak about lena as i knew her before she embarked on this journey of hers <clears throat> to fame as she's going to become very very famous now i hope <laughs> Nina earned her spurs with the Navy Wives Welfare Association which is a non-profit uh, organization nurtured by the Navy wives for community welfare of the naval families its uh, uh, activities include women empowerment then health environment and uh, many other outreach activities the aims are realized by senior ladies heading small groups of volunteer navy wives to steer the outreach programs like widow rehabilitation and uh, <clears throat> promotion of arts nurturing of talent etc in my opinion the most challenging initiative that nava does is that of sankalp sankalp is the school for the differently able children of the naval families you need somebody in sankalp who is patient empathetic sensitive and yet mentally you have to be very tough and very strong to be able to be dealing with the children to be teaching them things you have to be very patient and very sensitive now as president nava southern region i had to select a dynamic person to uh, lead this initiative of ours as the coordinator on pure instinct i selected nina and my faith was justified as she had all the required qualities the rest as they say is history what an outstanding job she did she created a loving and a caring environment for the special children or the differently able children of the naval community they were trained in academics and uh, also in vocational subjects so that they could and they were imparted basically some skill in life life skills so that they could fend for themselves out in the world when they grew up a little they were taught to make uh, various things like greeting cards incense sticks uh, etc which we used to put in the stalls run by nava but manned by the children themselves their products were sold and then the money was of course uh, used to provide facilities for the children themselves nina also organized workshops and counseling sessions for the parents for acceptance and improvement of the children so that they could learn the skills an exceptional specific achievement this i had to write down so that i would mention it was <clears throat> in reaching out to the other schools in uh, civil society of differently able children and this was a measure of confidence building and for developing social skills of the children for this she was also conferred the rotary shreshtha acharya award in recognition of her dedication and the selfless contribution to the cause and i must add that during all this period i was never aware that she herself had faced such an enormous challenge in life and uh, maybe that is what led to her being such a sensitive and such a wonderful person empathetic to all uh, the people around her especially the differently able children and their parents just a miracle my twist with infertility is a candid description of a personal ordeal with infertility there are many takeaways which she has already uh, uh, told us all about mostly i would say the things which really strike me the most is one the first one is for the person the infertile man or woman or the couple to realize that they are not alone in this journey there are others who are also undergoing the same difficulty the same pain and that gives some sort of hope and comfort to know that uh, other people have also traversed this path of course as she said for the spouses to understand for the uh, the general uh, uh, people that you come in contact with for them to be sensitized and to be sensitive 
and not make any comments like the example she gave uh, about uh, somebody asking her that if we know of an infertile couple can we gift them no that's a big no no <laughs> you can't do that you i mean that is what sensitivity or sensitization is all about you don't have to make it obvious you just have to be talking to them or listening to them and uh, nina she has written the book but as a life coach i think she uh, plans on embarking on a career of counseling such couples am i right nina so that you know the journey for them becomes easier and i think that is a, a wonderful uh, uh, choice that she has made but i would say that the bigger message of this book is for all of us to share the challenges that life throws at us squarely and to overcome them whatever be the results we have to face our challenges Meena embarked upon this project because she believed that her journey would not be complete if she didn't share her experiences and reach out to so many other couples. This book is the beginning of her dream to get across to all those who are in need of support. I have seen her evolve from a raw volunteer, unsure of herself. My experience with her was when she was Uh, uh, at sankalp and dealing with the children managing them so well and so nicely and she herself has now evolved into this you know such a beautiful confident and mature personality i wish her the very best in her endeavors thank you so much love you nina thank you so much thank you so much really I'm so proud thank you so much thank so you proud. so much thank you so much Thank you very much ma'am we have known uh, Nina to be a huge contributor somebody who does everything with a lot of compassion and every bit that you have shared with us only reinforces that thank you very much uh, Arpit I'm going to now request you to uh, all our other speakers are going to be online and uh, the next speaker is Surgeon Rear Admiral Nirmala Kanan NMVCM retired MD DGO a postgraduate in obstetrics and gynecology she is a recipient of the Nau Sena and Vishisht Seva medals may we please have her message online okay good evening to you all it is indeed an honor to be present at the launch of the book just a miracle my tryst with infertility and i'm grateful to the author mrs nina george for inviting me to speak a few words but this is also a momentous occasion for me to be at a function which is being graced by one of the most admirable women in this country shrimati mary com padma vibhushan Padma Bhushan, Padma Shri, member of the Rajya Sabha, an incredible sportswoman, an internationally famous boxer who has brought laurels to this country, and more importantly, shown us all that motherhood and an extreme sport such as boxing can go hand in hand if one puts one's heart and soul to it. speaking of the author Nina George has given us a first hand experience of the trials and tribulations she went through in the 8 year long quest for motherhood speaking of motherhood i'm reminded of a quote by Osho Bhagwan Rajneesh and i quote the moment a child is born the mother is also born she never existed before the woman existed but the mother never a mother is something absolutely new unquote the ability to conceive and have a child is a prerogative of the female species and every married woman 
nurtures a dream to have a child of her own with whom she can have a lifelong bond. Of course, there are many women who choose not to have children, and this is known as voluntary childlessness. It is involuntary childlessness that is called infertility. This is a worldwide phenomenon. It is estimated that there are about 60 to 80 million infertile couples worldwide and nearly 20 million infertile couples in this country alone. Childlessness from time immemorial has always been associated or blamed as a problem with the woman. And therefore, it is the woman who has to bear all the emotional stress and the social pressures that go along with it. However, since the 1970s, vast progress has been made in this field. And I'm sure everybody knows that with the first test tube baby being born in the late 1970s, giant strides have been made in this field. And obstetricians and doctors in this country also have gained the expertise in this field and ensured that they've had good results, thereby giving a lot of hope to people or families who go through this problem. The process, no doubt, is lengthy and costly, but then people who desire children overlook all these issues. There is, however, very little known about the mental wellness of people who have to bear this pain. The problem is rarely discussed in public. It is probably discussed only at home within families and maybe some courageous people go and seek counsellors or even see psychiatrists. Nina had to deal with the good, the bad and the ugly all through those eight years before her child was born. But it is her indomitable spirit and the love of her husband and the near and dear ones that helped her surmount this. But not every infertile person has such a happy environment or happy and positive environment. And therefore, this issue needs to be looked into in detail. I am glad that a fellow doctor, in fact a psychiatrist, will also be speaking on this topic a little while later. I'm also happy that Nina's book is being translated into Hindi, which means its reach is going to be much wider. And I hope in time to come, it'll get translated into many other languages, therefore, thereby allowing many women to read about this personal experience and gain hope from it. I wish Nina's book all the success it deserves. Thank you very much, ma'am. Every input is enlightening for all of us. And this is going to be a series with all our forthcoming speakers as well. We will keep getting insights about this wonderful subject which hasn't really been spoken of so much. And we really hope that this book by Nina George is going to nudge and prompt people to read the book and know so much about it all. Our next speaker is Dr. Prabha S. Chandra, MD, FRCPE, FRCPE SYCH, FAMS, Professor, Department of Psychiatry, National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Nimhans, Bangalore, giving her message to us online. Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Prabha Chandra. I'm a psychiatrist and I work at NIMHANS. Uh, I also run the perinatal mental health services, which basically uh, 
helps women navigate sometimes the difficult paths that they have to face in the context of childbirth, uh, which includes infertility. Um, so I'm, I feel really privileged that uh, Nina George has asked me to write the foreword and talk about the book at the book launch. Um, to me, this book really revealed uh, so many uh, inner strengths, uh, travails, uh, difficulties, uh, and the poignancy of women who are uh, yearning for motherhood, but which is evading them. Uh, you know, when uh, people get into marriage or have a partner, uh, they think that they will uh, sort of have the normal path of getting married, having a baby, maybe two babies, uh, but it's not the case for everybody. And uh, we are seeing more and more women handling uh, situations related to not being able to have a baby so easily for various reasons. Uh, nobody prepares you for this. Uh, your uh, sisters, your friends, many of them have not gone through this. Or sometimes I feel even if you go through this and then you have a baby at the end, you somehow forget everything. And I've known people who've said, you know, we don't want to think about that part, part of our lives. So uh, in, in that context, I think Nina's book is a real boon to mothers-to-be who are navigating this difficult journey, uh, untraversed journey. Uh, and I really uh, felt so uh, moved uh, reading the book. Every line spoke to me. And to me, what was most interesting was the inner strength uh, that Nina and George uh, you know, evolved within this whole space uh, through going through all the usual phases that we do uh, when we go through a loss. And in this case, loss of something that we never had. Uh, you know, anger, shock, bargaining, uh, doctor shopping, uh, looking at any possibility that might uh, help them have a baby. And then somewhere along the way, understanding that this is a journey which requires a different approach uh, about enjoying each other's companionship, about reveling in the small things in life, uh, about being grateful for what you already have, uh, about creativity about conversation, about commitment. And I think that this book uh, will speak to many, many, many women. Uh, Nina, thank you so much for writing this book. Uh, you know, while uh, some people may say that, you know, in the end, Nina had a baby. So, uh, you know, uh, will it be relevant to other women who are going through similar uh, issues? I think it will. I think, uh, you know, the fact that Arpit came as a gift is indeed a miracle. But I have a feeling that even if Arpit had not come as a gift, uh, Nina and George would have found a way of creating many Arpits in the world uh, through other means, uh, through, through their creativity, uh, through their generosity to other children. Uh, and hence, I think uh, the journey of Nina and George, which has been so beautifully depicted in this group, uh, you know, and, and the book kind of speaks to so many women who will uh, go through this uh, path. So I wish you all the success uh, and I wish I had been there personally. Uh, and it's really great that um, Ms. Mary Com is uh, uh, doing the book launch. Who better could you have um, than a, a leader, a, a most resilient woman uh, who's navigated very difficult paths. So um, all the best for your book launch. And I hope the book receives a lot of success. Uh, and thank you once again for giving me this opportunity uh, and privilege of reviewing the book. Thank you and all the best to you, Nina, to George and to Arpit and, and, and your whole family. Thanks a lot. Thank you very thank much, you very Dr. Prabha Chandra for those brilliant insights. And of course, most critically about how to work on a <clears throat> human mind responsible to make our lives either happy or hellish. The choice is ours. So next speaker is Mrs. Nina Malhotra, wife of Commodore P.K. Malhotra, retired, who was Mr. George's boss for three decades, for three decades, and uh, both Nina Malhotra and Nina George shared common interests and hobbies 
for a very long time. And I'm sure she has some very interesting stories to share with us. Mrs. Nina Malhotra. Nina, apart from being my namesake, has always held a special place in my heart. I still remember her as a young naval wife taking her first tentative steps in the naval community and what a star she has grown to be. She has been an avid gardener and had the most exotic blooms in her garden. I admired her cooking, designing and embroidery, all hobbies which I myself enjoyed and now am proud to see her as a published author. Choosing to be the voice of other women, telling the story of her struggles and coming to terms with infertility and aiming to develop empathy within society as a whole. She has done stellar work with differently able children and been such a blessing and support to their parents. Nina, I salute you. May you go from strength to strength in your endeavors. God bless. Thank you, Nina Malhotra. I, I was looking forward looking to some forward more, to some forward, more some intimate, some intimate, more, intimate moments that both Ninas would have spent together. But whatever little she shared with us was wonderful. Our next speaker is Mrs. Minakshi Sharma, a writer, a journalist, a management educator, and a book lover who enjoys building communities through her book clubs and author interaction platforms. Over to Minakshi Sharma from Goa. Hey everyone, my name is Minakshi and I'm speaking to you from Goa. I have known Nina for over three decades and I feel so proud, so happy and I want to give my heartiest congratulations to her for this amazing book called Just a Miracle. So like I said, I've known her for very long and yet I only knew about her what was obvious to everybody. A beautiful young lady with a charming smile a very, very happy heart and a very helping attitude. She used to do her best for everybody, personally as well as professionally. And she never shied away from any responsibility. And yet all this time when we were watching this young lady, what we didn't realize is that still waters run deep. She was, as they say in Navy terms, navigating the seas of life, the troughs and the crests, all the waves, and actually doing it with all the inner strength that was required. So it has taken her very long also to actually internalize this journey. This journey, as they say, which she calls it, the tryst with infertility, and how she overcame it, how she developed self-love, how she came out victorious, how she made sure that today she's become an inspiration and a beacon of light for many other women. So Nina, I wish you all the very best. I know that what you have done is nothing short of amazing, not only in the journey that you have undertaken, but in the truthfulness and the frank attitude with which you have written this book. As a lover of books and as somebody who understands how hard it is to actually take your emotion and then put it out there for others. I think not only have you done an amazing job, but you've also inspired each one of us. I wish you all the very best. All those who have known Nina George, I'm sure resonate with resonate with reson that Minakshi has just said. I certainly do. And second, everything that Minakshi has said about Nina. Coming almost towards the end of the program, I am now going to invite the most important gentleman, Rear Admiral A. George, retired the gentleman who stood with his wife Nina as the rock of Gibraltar, holding her hand throughout her arduous journey. I'm sure his perspective will be inspiring to many out there. Over to you, Mr. George, for your address and vote for thanks. Thank you, Dipali. Mrs. M.C. Mary Com, MP Rajasabha, 
Padma Vibhushan, Padma Bhushan and Padma Shri, Shri Sujit Kumar, MP Rajya Sabha, all the other senior dignitaries present here today, all our esteemed guests who are participating online and my dear friends. Nina during her speech and in her book has on numerous occasions mentioned that I have always supported her during her difficult times. I need to mention here that it was mutual and she was my pillar of strength both during the initial difficult years and thereafter through my entire naval service. Despite all the emotional trauma that she had to undergo, I repeat, avoidable emotional trauma caused by the insensitive environment. Caused by the insensitive environment, she had always strived to maintain a happy home. To give you an example of the depth of the avoidable emotional trauma, I need to read a passage from a book, a very short passage. I just do that. Once we had gone for a vacation to Kerala, <laughs> one elderly lady staying close to my husband's house had come to visit my mother-in-law. Amma was not at home. The old lady was visibly happy. She had me all to herself. I had seen her a few times earlier and the only communication between us was a smile. When she first asked me about kids, her tone was of concern. Then she went on to suggest some doctors. By now her tone was of authority. Later on, she went on to tell me that many good proposals had come from my husband, but due, due to his bad luck, he had to settle for me. By then, her tone had become sarcastic. I felt so miserable, didn't even know whether to react or respond. She went on to say that I should count myself lucky that he didn't seek a divorce from me. How audacious. Now she was in full flow and went on to tell stories of guys who had divorced their wives because they couldn't bear kids. It was getting a little too much for me, so I told her that educated people won't do such stupid things. Didn't know why I had to get into such futile conversation. She gave me a good lecture on that too. I was completely shaken. I still was very sure that it was that lady's opinion and not from my in-laws. But later on, I started viewing every word my in-laws or anyone from my husband's side spoke with a critical eye. How strange is the working of the human mind. Despite such incidents happening very often, I had just now mentioned that Nina did her best at all times to maintain a warm and happy home in its true sense. She was full of energy, ever smiling and always raring to go. While there were occasional dull moments, she would never let that spoil the happy atmosphere at home. She would cook and bake the most delicious and sumptuous, sumptuous uh, meals for me and our social circle of friends, always maintain the best of the gardens with our green fingers, and also ensure that the house was aesthetically decorated with her own artistic talents, which God had abundantly showered on her. She, she, she was always calm, composed, contented, without any complaints and comparison. All this ensured a very positive atmosphere at home and I could give my 100% to naval aviation, of which I was part of. There were days when I would leave home very early in the morning, stay back through the day at work, skipping lunch on many occasions, and get back late at night due to some unforeseen operational defects on the aircraft. All that I had to do was to pick up an ice cream from the naval club and give it to her as she opened the door. She was least demanding. <laughs> I need to mention here that Nina was extremely courageous. By this, I am not trying to tell that she never broke down, but she would cry her heart out and would recope quickly. All that I had to do was to take her 
out for a stroll on the lovely Goan beaches because she loved watching the waves. Every time they fell, they rose again just like her. Robin Sharma had once quoted and I state, success is not a function of the size of your title, but the richness of your contribution. Nina in her 31 years of married life has not carried any major title against her name, though she has been working on and off has not carried any major titles against her name due to my transferable naval service. However, she has significantly contributed to the welfare of the differently able children, both within the Navy and outside. Now in a new avatar, she is all set to contribute to bring down the stress of infertile couples. Now moving on to my main task for the evening of thanking all those who had been part of this book creation and its launch. At the outset, let me thank Madam Mary Com for having accepted our invitation to be here with us today evening despite a hectic schedule. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, your presence here today means a lot to us and this will certainly send a huge message towards women empowerment. We are eternally indebted to you for this fine gesture. A heartfelt thanks to Sri Sujit Kumar, MP Rajya Sabha for his esteemed presence here today despite having come back from Rome today morning. Our thanks and gratitude are also to the eminent speakers who share their pers perspectives in the field of psychiatry, gynecology and assisted reproductive techniques and also through their priceless forwards and book reviews. They are Dr. Prabhachandra, Professor of Psychiatry in Imans, Surgeon Rear Admiral Nirmala Kanan, retired, Dr. Mohan S. Kamath, Professor of Reproductive Medicine, CMC Velour, Dr. Anne Mary, Head IVF Unit, Bangalore Baptist Hospital, they in fact spoke before we started the program. Dr. John P. John, Professor of Psychiatry in Nimans. Mrs. Rena Lamba, former President, Naval Wives Welfare Association. Dr. Diane Wardle, Professor of Nursing, Houston, Texas. And Dr. Roshni John, Consultant Obstetrician and Gynecologist of the KG Medical Center, New South Wales, Australia for all the reviews. Our sincere thanks also due to Mrs. Payal Soni, former President Nawa, Southern and Eastern Region, Mrs. Nina Malotra and Mrs. Meenakshi Sharma who shared their thoughts about the interactions with Nina during her difficult times and the subsequent naval journey. I also need to sincerely thank Mrs. Deepali Narula for stitching up a grand book launch event, a professional of marketing events and hospitality for more than two and a half decades. Having worked with international brands like Western Union, EXL and Fashion TV. Today, she is also a life transformation coach and a cultural impresario. Last but not the least, our sincere thanks to all the senior dignitaries, which include Mr. Subramaniam, Secretary of Social Justice, Mrs. Pushpa Subramaniam, Secretary Food Processing, the Vice Chief of the Naval Staff, Admiral and Mrs. Gormade, and Vice Admiral and Mrs. Srinivasan. Thank you so much. Thank you, Admiral Sony, sir, for having uh, accepted the invite. Thank you, sir. All the senior dignitaries that I've spoken of and my colleagues and friends who are present here as well as those who are watching this live on the YouTube and Facebook. Thank you once again for having come over and bless the occasion. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. George. That was absolutely brilliant and thank you very much for your vote of thanks for each and every one that you have mentioned. I'm sure your thoughts have brilliantly ignited a lot of people who are watching the event now and also online and of course the program which will be on air for perpetuity. With this we come to the end of the evening. Ma'am, Mrs. Mary Com, thank you very much for your precious time. And for each one of you out here for being present here and all those who have watched the event online. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there is an arrangement for refreshments. Please do proceed and have 
a good evening ahead. Thank you very much once again. And thank you, Nina George, with all the very best for the success of your book. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, George. A big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and bye-bye. Good night. The seasons come and go like thoughts of you Like a wave returns to the sea into the blue They change but in a cycle that I can't lose Each painful but delightful to live through Just like another season Not for long, just a time Just like another season Maybe this time next year you'll reappear For no reason But I'll cherish every day Until you come my way this season Turn and change just like your mind Like the sun gives in to the moon Into the night Time continues marching It slowly crawls With each new one starting I recall Just a time, just like another season.